I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we are in the month of September, praise God. And I told you this month, God is revealing eternal life to his children. Now, we're going to start a series of teachings on, on this. So you'll be well educated in the things that God is saying concerning this month. Praise God. But before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's release our faith right now. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It comes from you, Lord, and I receive it. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now turn your Bibles to a popular scripture you know. John chapter 3 and verse 16. Now if you don't know that scripture, they will better ask you where you were born. Praise God. John 3, 16. It's so popular that even people that have never been to church know it. Praise God. All right, so John chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus speaking here, because John was quoting Jesus. You no, know, last week I kept telling you, I love John. Praise God. He's my, he's my power. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God, I want you to take note of what I'm reading to you now. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now this tells you that God was drawn by his love to the world, that he gave his only begotten son. Now, you see, many times we read this scripture, it said that he gave his only begotten son. You know what we think about? He gave him to die. And that's what we think when we read this scripture. He gave him to die. Now, but I want you to follow carefully now and not, not think what he didn't say when you're reading it. Now he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, the word everlasting life is actually the same thing as eternal life. It's eternal life that he was talking about here. Now, this gives some people the, the idea that everlasting life or eternal life is defined by everlasting. So, it's a life that you live forever and ever and ever and ever yes while that is true while that is very true that it if you have eternal life it means you will live as long as god lives see that now because that's actually the life that god carries in him eternal life is the god kind of life so it's a life that has no end you see it's a life that had no end now Last week, towards the end of last week, I began to share some thoughts with you and about the ministry of Jesus and why Jesus truly came. And now there's a reason I was pointing out here that, you know, many times we read that he gave his only begotten son to die. No, no, no. You see, because people think that Jesus came to die. Now, if you don't understand what I'm about to explain to you, your concept of the gospel will be a bit faulty. Trust me. So, so we think, oh, he gave his only begotten son to die. I told you something last week. I said, if Adam and Eve had not sinned, Jesus still would have come. C come to do what? It was his ministry. It was ordained by God that he is the one that will give life to man. See that now? I explained to you last week, I touched on that last week, that 
Adam and Eve were created, the intent of God was to give them eternal life. But they did not receive eternal life. Not because they rejected it, but because they didn't get to the place where they will receive it. It was not given to them the day they were created. Now you need to understand that. This was the reason God said in the garden, there are two trees he put in there. He says, don't, talk, don't eat of it. If they eat of it, you will surely die. Now there were two trees, one the tree of knowledge of good and evil and also then there's another, there was another tree which was the tree of life. Now I've told you this, those trees had no power in them, in themselves. So it's not like if you eat the fruit then you now know the difference between good and evil. No, they were markers. Understand this, they were markers. What do I mean markers? They were point of obedience that God set. Now, in God's dealing with us, from the Old Testament even till this day, every dealing that God has with us, He creates, He, he puts markers in our journey. Now, why, do, why do, does God put markers in our journey? It's very simple. Because you see, we have angels that we walk with here on earth. Every plan of God, angels have a, a role to play. Now, the angel's role, especially on earth, functions with men. So we walk together. The angels have been sent to help us. You see? So now, God places markers to guide the way of our journey with him. Now, what do I mean markers? Markers are simply points of obedience. At every stage in your life, at every walk, everything you do with God, there are points of markers. Now, there are points you will have encounters and what you do after do that encounter will determine what happens next in your life. Now, when we say encounters, people just think encounters are spiritual revelations or not just that, even some physical things that happen. Some of you don't realize that when, when you know, somebody just hurts you in a way you never ever imagined, you don't know that that also is an encounter. Because at that very moment, God is watching you the most. Now, that, you know, sometimes people have revelations and they wake up, they don't even know what to do with it. But God is watching. After that experience, what decisions did you make? After that experience, what have you done? What did you decide to do? So same way a spiritual revelation can be called an encounter. Also, when you have special dealings with men, it's an encounter. So what you do after that realization is what determines what phase of life you're going to walk into. Now, all these things are supervised by angels. Now, angels don't know God's will for your life. They don't know. They, are only be, they have only been given instructions to carry out, just like David said, he has given his angels charge concerning me to keep me in all my ways. They will bear me up in their hands lest I dash my foot against the stone. So you see, angels have received charge. Now, what are those charges? Instructions about your life. So this is how it plays out. God have told the angels, look, when, when my son gets to that, or when my daughter gets to that junction, he is supposed to turn left. When he turned left, follow this. You see that now? Now, the angels are waiting for you to turn left at that junction. Now, what happens at that junction? An encounter happens at that junction. That encounter, it's supposed to make you Reflect because naturally you may be deceived to go right. See? So you have an encounter at that junction. That encounter can either tempt you to go right or by deep reflection or stability and consistency, you will know to go left. Now that's so when you go right, you miss it. And then God will now be working out a way that you will remember or he will get to you to realize that you're supposed to turn the other way. And when you turn the right way, now angels are there to minister to you. They begin to usher you into the new things that God has set for that season in your life. 
Now, this is how we live life. Praise God. So, I'm explaining this to tell you that those two trees that God kept in the garden were for this purpose. Points of encounters. See? So, they were supposed to keep that tree. Now, he, he Adam, they, they walked on that tree. They dressed, they kept it, they kept the whole place neat. But guess what? They were not supposed to eat of that tree. Now, actually, not because they were not supposed to eat of the tree. The tree wasn't poisonous. It was actually a tree. You know, some people say it was not a physical tree. Read your Bible. It's, I mean, it's very simple. When the woman realized that the tree was a normal tree, what, what did she realize about the tree? Like, you know how um, they, they, Adam painted this picture to Eve. That that tree is a very special tree. Don't, don't look at it the way it is. So that tree has power. That tree. Then suddenly when, when, when the serpent spoke to Eve, she now looked at the tree and said, come on now. This is purely a mango tree. That's what she realized. More like her eyes were opened. <laughs> Do you understand? So you see, people think it was after they ate the fruit that their eyes opened. No. While the devil was talking to her, she suddenly looked at the tree and realized, this is a normal mango tree. I mean, it's not different from any other tree. And it has fruits that are good for food. Come on now. So what was my husband telling me? You know, I was just thinking that this, this, this tree, if you plug it, you know, it, it's maybe it's going to spring or something. <laughs> you understand? Now, that's how it is with life. There are things, there are things maybe you heard growing up. There were meats you believed growing up. And then you just felt that if you do this thing, you will just drop dead. You see? Now, so God told them, the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. Now, we have read that to mean, as you finish eating this tree, you will drop dead. No, that's not what God meant. God never meant it that way. What God meant is, you were created to live forever. But if you disobey me where this is concerned, you have introduced death into your life. So no matter how long you live, you will surely die. That's what God meant. See, now sometimes we don't understand his speech. So because you don't understand his speech, you introduce thoughts that are wrong. And so from thoughts, teachings, preachings come that are wrong. But that's what God actually said to them. If you now actually, if you want to really know the truth, actually what God said to them is, you don't eat of that tree without my permission. See, because he says, of every tree in the garden, you may freely eat. The word freely is the key word. But of that tree of knowledge and good and evil, you may not freely eat. You can only eat of that tree the day that I tell you to eat it. Because God didn't create that tree to become an idol to them. See that now? Understand this. No. They were supposed to eat of the tree because it was a normal fruit, normal tree. But God was seeing how long man will obey him. Remember, he's had dealings with Lucifer. And he said, Lucifer, take note of this. Lucifer had been given eternal life. Oh yes, he had it. He had it. That's why he still existed. Sometimes people say, why can't God just kill Satan and everybody, everybody will just rest? No, he can't. He can't. I, I use the word he can't. He can't. That's why even at the final judgment, Lucifer will not be killed. He will just be locked in prison. And that's even that action. You see, no one said, why, why can't God just lock him now? No, even the final judgment of Lucifer is not going to be done by God alone. It's going to be done by us. All of us together. So we all are going to form a, a, a council that will take that decision. That's how powerful eternal life is. Yo, I, I pray you will understand this. That's how powerful eternal life is. It's not something God can just snap and say, you've made me angry, get out of here, I'll destroy you. No. No. 
Now, Jesus, hear me and understand this. From the very beginning, it was Jesus, even to Adam and Eve, it was Jesus that was ordained. So they were to keep that obedience until Jesus comes. You see, where? So they were supposed to keep it until how many times? No, it was their disobedience that delayed the coming of Jesus. Yes. Because from the very beginning, I, I read that to you last week. There was no, you know, I, I had to dispel that scripture, the lamp that was slain from the foundation of the earth. Now, I, I dealt with that last week. There was no lamb slain from the foundation of the world. None. Because God never planned that man would sin. The slaying of the lamb was a plan that came in along the way. See that now? It came in along the way. Now, I pray the Lord give us um, time to explain this as we go on this week. Trust me, if you, if, if you just open your heart up, you are going to learn a lot. <laughs> Praise God. So now, Jesus, I'm taking you all to this history because of what Jesus said here. That whosoever believes in him, in who? In Jesus will not perish, but have everlasting life. What made Adam and Eve to perish? Because of their lack of, or because of their unbelief. God had told Adam about that tree. And then God had told him about the tree of life. Adam knew exactly that he was waiting for the day Jesus will come and give him of that tree. It, now, now, hear, hear, hear me. It's not like Jesus will give him of the chair and say, eat now so that you live. No, you have obeyed me till this point. You see? Now, just like you remember when God told Abraham to take his son to the mountain and to give him, offer him as a burnt offering. Right? You remember, right? Now, Abraham literally took Isaac to that mountain. But now, you know, not because God was looking for a blood sacrifice from, him, from Abraham. No. God was testing Abraham's obedience. You see that now? Now, people who don't understand this, now that's why God didn't let Abraham go through with the, with the, with the slaying of Isaac because he could have actually raised him up. But he didn't let him do that because if not, people will come and say the best, greatest way to please God is to offer your first son. You understand that? Yeah, God. So, but God was testing Abraham's obedience. That was all what that whole experience was about. Testing Abraham's obedience. Now, it was the same way God was testing the obedience of Adam right in the Garden of Eden. See? So a day would have come when God would have said, because now in Abraham's case, when they got to that mountain, God says, don't kill the boy. Look, there's a ram there. Use that ram and offer the sacrifice. But while Abraham, now preachers have come to say Abraham misunderstood. No, he did not misunderstand God. He knew exactly what God said and what God meant to him at that point. That's why I say it was a test, was to see how far he will go to obey him. So Adam and Eve, they were supposed to, God was watching them to see how far they will go seeing this tree every day and realizing, ah, this tree, mm, God said we should not eat it. So we're waiting for the day he will give it to us. God said we should not eat it. So we're waiting for the day he will give it to us. That's all God was expecting them to do. And when the time is fulfilled, he would have come, sat down with them, congratulate them for their obedience and they would have been given, hallelujah, they would have been given the Spirit. You will understand this as we go on. Praise God. Listen, Jesus said, anyone who believes in Him will have eternal life. Now, are we getting eternal life? Now, this is one thing you need to understand. Are we getting eternal life the very day we believe? Or is there something 
Is, is, there, is this something he's going to give to us later? You will find this out, praise God, as we go on in this broadcast, because my time is up. Father, I thank you. This is the season for this revelation. And I pray your children, their hearts will be open to receive your truth. And by your truth, live the life that you have planned and ordained for them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Have the best day ever today. As you step out today, receive all the good things that God has planned for you. In Jesus' name. Bye.